busy week this week. Yeah, I know. Well, as long as you pick up some more cell phones. Oh, I also want you to know. We got to, yeah, then we have that feel thirsty. Good morning and welcome to the May 17th uh, Board of Supervisors meeting. Would you please stand and join me in the flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Supervisor Worsley. Well, just to uh, recap also, I mean, we had a grand opening for our new motor pool last Friday. It was great to uh, see that project uh, finally get to completion and, um, and as part of that process, moving off of the parking lot there by the courthouse, uh, our next part of the our capital project will be the demolition of the old uh, health building and uh, expansion of the parking lot, which is greatly needed for the public and for our employees. So uh, it's great to see our pa capital projects still moving forward, and, um, and we've got more exciting things on the horizon. So a great uh, time for celebration. Thank you. Rashida. I guess we all had a busy week. Uh, last week I attended the Sequoia Riverlands Trust dedication mm -hmm. of Dry Creek, uh, the new construction they've done. And it will make it nicer for the visitors to, uh, to look at that property. <coughs> On Saturday, <coughs> I attended the uh, Portable Fair of Livestock sale. Supervisor Ennis, who's the chairman of that sale, and watched the kids show their animals and sell their animals. <coughs> Act Commissioner was also there and our sheriff and it was a very successful sale I'm sure the supervisor and this will expand on that Saturday and Sunday was also the foodie fest in Exeter which was very well attended it was a very nice event and I'm sure it'll be larger next year this coming Saturday Exeter is having their relay for life at the high school and that'll start I guess approximately 8 o'clock uh, Saturday morning that's all I have. Thank you. Yes, the uh, first Porterville Fair at the new fairgrounds uh, kicked off last week. And uh, as uh, Supervisor Sheeta said, I do co-chair the sales committee to sell all the animals. And uh, we had an outstanding year. We sold 295 animals uh, with $368,000 taken in for the, for the young people. And out of that, uh, about 116000 was add-ons that means people just came and gave kids twenty five dollars fifty dollars didn't want to buy an animal but helped them with their project so very thankful to the people of the community and the Ag Commissioner and Bill Whitman and Supervisor Ishida and all the other people that showed up to to buy those animals uh, kind of proud because my uh, niece Nicole Hefner was the grand champion steer she had the grand champion steer and my uh, nephew uh, Austin Hefner had the champion FFA 4-H uh, steer, and then uh, Brittany, my other little niece, was reserve champion 4-H steer. So when we went in on the final drive, there was four of my kids in there and uh, almost had to leave. I thought people were going to get kind of upset. You know, when one family starts taking over and they knew I was related to them, uh, they were trying to accuse me of going talking to the judge or something, but I had nothing to do with it. But kids did an excellent job and very proud of all the kids that participated. 4-H and FFA, and then of course this Friday we'll be having our awards banquet at the fairgrounds uh, starting at 5 o'clock where all the kids will get their awards for how they uh, showed their animals, and not only their animals, but the, the uh, ag mechanics, the, the welding, uh, uh, all the other things that, are, that go into the Portobello Fair and the different kids that don't show animals, that some of the other things that they do. So very proud of all the kids that participated. Uh, of course last week too we had the groundbreaking for uh, Scranton Avenue, which has been a long time coming. Uh, it was supposed to be the first groundbreaking for Major R four years ago, so they finally got that put together. But this is going to be a big, big thing for the Porterville area because it, it gives the Walmart distribution center a different way out to get onto Highway uh, 65, so it'll pull some of the traffic off of JN190, which has been much needed for, for many years. So looking forward to that. Uh, also, uh, this Friday, we got Step Up Alta Vista, Alta Vista School. Uh, we'll be having a Step Up event uh, starting at 3, from 3 to 7, uh, put on by the Sheriff's and Probation Department, and uh, I'll be attending that as well. Uh, Thursday night, I'll be in Bakersfield for the uh, RAC meeting, Resource Advisory Committee, uh, where we're going dis to distribute the uh, rural schools money, which we got in lieu of timber sales. And we'll be looking at grants and trying to get some grant money distributed not only to Tulare County but to Kern County. So uh, looks like it's going to be a very busy week, uh, but uh, looking forward to it. Okay, at this time, I think we will go to uh, item 16. Items not timed. Uh, Health and Human Services. We request for additional staffing. 
Good morning, Chairman Ennis, members of the board, Mr. Rousseau, Ms. Balesling. I'm here this morning um, as you have a request before you to add 25 positions to the Child Welfare Services Division. Oh, I should say, my name is Juliette Webb. I'm the Division Manager for Child Welfare Services. The positions in front of you are being requested not only to support rising caseloads within the Child Welfare Services Division, but also to serve to create the infrastructure vitally needed to implement changes and programmatic improvements generated by new legislation and by existing mandates. Due to reductions in CWS allocations over the last two years, um, largely the uh, veto by Governor Schwarzenegger that removed 10% of the funding to child welfare services statewide, reductions to child welfare staffing um, over these past few years provided us with the opportunity to look for ways to create operational efficiencies. Um, and where we could, we did capitalize on them. For example, we did put into place um, a supervised visitation program utilizing partnerships with foster parents, relatives, family resource centers uh, to provide supervised visitation, uh, largely which was handled by Child Welfare Services staff prior um, to 2008. However, um, operational efficiencies aside, the caseloads per worker in Child Welfare Services have continued to rise. That is related to the fact that referrals to the Child Welfare Services hotline um, have risen while the number of staff to respond to those calls and then to then manage cases uh, for the referrals that we have that then do have to turn into cases, um, the number of staff to handle those has decreased. New legislation, uh, most specifically AB 12, uh, which will extend foster care to age 21 and goes into effect on January 1st of 2012, will also have quite an impact on caseloads in Tulare County. And the economic stressors that continue to plague our region and the state um, likely mean that referrals to our hotline will continue to be on the rise. Um, they are up over 50, they're up over 10 percent over, over last year alone. Um, the 53, we have 53 federal and state outcome measures that Child Welfare Services performance is measured again, against. This adds a very large layer of complexity and necessitates that we provide diligent oversight within our division to ensure that all mandates are enforced and that practice by social workers is constantly evaluated and improved. Through the California Child and Family Services Review process, Child Welfare Services is required to evaluate program performance on an ongoing basis and to develop a systems improvement plan on a three-year cycle. Um, in fact, we are going to be returning to your board um, later in the summer to discuss, the, share the findings of our review of all 53 outcome measures. That's what we call our county self-assessment process. And then toward the end of this year, probably uh, in December of this year, we will be returning to your board again to bring back our systems improvement plan that will um, outline the, the improvements we expect to make over the next three years. I mention all of this so, th so that your board can get a better understanding that of why we're adding some administrative positions on the agenda item as well. Those, those administrative positions are specifically being requested to provide that infrastructure that is vitally needed to lead and sustain many of these program improvement efforts across this Child Welfare Services Division. So for these reasons, Child Welfare Services is respectfully requesting your board to take action to add the 25 positions before you, and I would be happy to answer any additional questions you may have at this time. <clears throat> Um, two things. Caseload per worker. You, those words actually came out of your mouth. What, what are those? What do we go from? We go from 10 to 20, we from went, 50 to 100? That's a good question. Um, we actually, in, uh, just one year ago, our average caseload per worker in child welfare services, this is for the case carrying function, was 31 uh, per worker. We had about 31. We are now up to 37 per worker as of April of 2011. That's the most recent data. When we look at the referral numbers, it's even more startling. Those are the, those are the calls to the Child Welfare Services hotline that must be investigated by our um, in-field response workers. 
We, um, through all of 2010, through all of 2010, we received 6,657 um, reports of abuse or neglect in Tulare County involving 10,755 individual children. We're on track this year to go over, to go to 7,500, so almost an increase of 1,000 referrals involving nearly twice as many children. Are the, the social service worker threes, are the threes the ones that have that actual caseload? Correct. That's why the, you're the, the social services, yes, Supervisor, the, the, the social services worker three CWS classification are our social workers that both carry foster care and family maintenance cases and our social workers who do responses in the field. That, that classification covers both functions. Last question, then. Where are we going to get these people from? Are, are we just shifting from one area to another? Are these actually new positions that will literally add positions to the overall agency? These would be actual new positions that we would add to the agency. Where are we going to get them? Well, hopefully through recruitment, we will be able to solicit some of our great grads that are coming out of our um, uh, Fresno State, Cal State Bakersfield, uh, have masters in social work programs, bachelors in social work programs. We do partner with both of those universities um, to try to recruit as many of those grads to professionalize child welfare. And um, I'll be honest with you, Supervisor, there are a plethora of applicants for these positions. The positions that we've had vacant for some time when we have had the fortune to be able to hire um, a few positions, we have had a large candidate pool of folks who are out there looking for work. Thank you. Supervisor Vanderpool. Uh, Juliet, I'm just kind of curious. You, you mentioned the, uh, I think it's AB 12, uh, yes. you said, uh, and, and the adjustment there to allow kids to stay in the foster care system from age 18 to 21. Correct. Um, you know, that, that, that's a great allowance, but is that, uh, I've got a couple questions about that. Is that a funded allowance? I mean, are, are, are we getting some additional monies to uh, accommodate those kids for those extra years? The cost for um, keeping the the cost for the foster care dollars, the placement dollars, to keep kids in placement that we pay, that are paid, those are, that is a funded piece. That is a piece that is being funded through savings that um, there is now federal financial participation in what we call the KinGap program, mm -hmm. which that actually went into effect January 1st of this year. Previously, that was a state and county only funded program and for pl uh, placements, excuse me. Federal funding is coming in. The offset of those dollars, that's what's offsetting the state dollars, and those dollars are now being applied to cover the cost of keeping the, of allowing these children from 18 to 20 to, to remain in foster care. As it relates to the social work, uh, the case carrying functions, no, there are no additional dollars that come with those. However, there are sufficient savings in the child welfare services budget currently because of the fact that we did take um, Quite we, we laid off quite a number of staff over the last few years in the Child Welfare Services Division due to these funding reductions, that we have enough money to cover the additional positions we're putting forward today in our budget. Okay, and then that brings me to a, a couple other questions. You, you kind of started on it. Uh, we have laid off uh, some staff. Are we able to bring back uh, any of the staff that we have laid off uh, well, in the um, past? To, to answer your question, the, the positions that were affected by the layoffs over the last two years, the two different rounds that occurred, were largely not social worker positions. Okay. We tried to retain all social workers. However, there were some social workers inadvertently hit by you know, layoffs and bumping and yeah. things that do happen. Um, I am working currently with HR&D. They have already brought to my attention that there may be some reinstatement lists for some of the positions we're asking to add, and I will be working with them to, um, to utilize those lists for sure, if Great. there are. That, that's that's there. really good to hear. And then the last question, I'm done, I promise. Um, yeah. What is the actual impact to Tulare County uh, foster care uh, of allowing, I mean, is it going to be an additional 1,000 kids, 5,000 kids uh, from the 18 to 21 uh, age shifting? It will not be anywhere near that okay. amount of um, okay. that number. We have a... Um, uh, 
a certain a number of kids that age out each year. Um, I'd have to look at the most recent data, but my guess would be we'd have anywhere between 50 and 100 children okay. aging out so, in a so given it's year. Not that big. So, and it will be graduated over the next three years, but it does add a layer of complexity in that the child welfare work, services workers, the social workers who will have to work with this population, now have to take on a separate mind, uh, a different mindset in terms of they're not lo they're no longer dealing with juveniles. Um, they're dealing with young adults, and so we also have a large training curve for our staff to get ready for what does it mean to case manage staff, I mean, excuse me, case manage uh, children who are not really children anymore, children in the dependency system who are actually young adults. So that, it's, it's going to be a, a Well, process. Thank, thank you very much for answering okay. the questions, and mm -hmm. it's good to hear that you're thinking about all these things, so thanks. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I just want an answer, partial answer to Supervisor Vanderpool's question. Uh, the um, welfare section, it's called, of the County Council's Association is actively reviewing whether there could be a SB 90 claim for additional costs for essentially um, the state's position is we're giving you the money, but it's not, it doesn't go far enough. And in the past, courts have found that that's not, doesn't meet the law. So it's entirely possible that there will be litigation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I actually had less of a question, but I wanted to make a comment or a statement because I think it's important for the public to understand that we really have two different budgets in Tulare County. We have our general fund budget and we have our uh, Health and Human Services Agency, which is primarily a subvented program. And so when we look at these additional people being added and the cost that goes with that, the funding that stream that pays for that does not come from our direct taxes and so forth in our general funded position. So. Uh, you know, people say, well, why are you adding people on here and then you're laying off perhaps, you know, depending on what happens in the state budget where we may be laying off probation department people and sheriffs and DA. These are separate funds allocated for these types of positions which come to us from state and federal sources. So uh, it's appropriate that we're doing what we're doing because we're meeting rising expectations in terms of mandates and larger caseload. So it's appropriate that we would be funding these positions from state and federal uh, finances and so what I, the point I want to make here is that we're, we're doing what we're, we should be doing and we're doing what we have to do with these funds. These funds could not be turned around and be used to pay for the sheriff's department, probation department, or district attorney's office. And I, you know, I mean, we know that up here, but I think sometimes the public is not really aware of that. They just see the counties adding bodies. I thought they were financially destitute. How can they be adding bodies? Very different funding source, different funding stream. And so what we're doing today is appropriate, and we're not taking anything away from our general fund of positions. We're using appropriately the dollars that are available to us for these particular programs. And so I think it's important to make those comments. I just hope that the sustainability is there and we're not hiring people today and hopefully have, not have to lay them off tomorrow. So that would be, that would be my only concern uh, with this thing, using state and federal dollars and the condition our state's in, the condition our federal government's in. Uh, I just hope there's some sustainability there uh, within this. Except that if the reason that we don't have sustainability is because we have a roaring economy that comes back and people are back working and we don't have to have <laughs> our welfare services are, are not as important as they are right now. In our bad economy, that's part of what drives uh, this, this need today. So, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I would move I would move approval of this item. Moved by Supervisor second. Vanderpool, second by Supervisor Cox. Cast your votes. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, we're just a little early for our uh, consent timed items. Consent. We haven't done consent. Yeah, we can do that. Let's do that. Okay, let's go to consent calendar. Uh, item seven through fifteen. Anyone wish to pull anything or add to? If not, Mr. Chairman, I move approval of our consent calendar okay. items 7 through 15. Moved by Supervisor Wordley. Second. Second by Supervisor Ishida. Cast your votes. Votes unanimous. Uh, do we need for closed session? We yes, Mr. Chairman, you do. You have items A through D on your board's closed session agenda. Okay, let's go to closed session until our time comes up. We'll be back in about seven minutes.
Okay, the Board of Supervisors is back in session. Let's take up item number three, public hearing request from Resource Management Agency to authorize the submittal of a 2010-11 Community Development Block Grant, Economic Development Planning and Technical Assistance. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, Supervisors. Lori Mercer with the Resource Management Agency. Hope this morning finds you all well. The purpose of this public hearing is to receive comments and solicited input regarding the county's 2011 Community Development Block Grant Program, also known as CDBG, for the Planning and Technical Assistance Grant Applications. Spanish translation was advertised in public notice, however, no one has requested these services. A volunteer sign-in sheet is being passed around. The objective of of the CDBG program is to develop viable communities for, by providing decent housing, a suitable living environment, and expanding ec economic opportunities, principally for persons of low and moderate income. All projects that are funded by the CDBG program must carry out at least one of the following national objectives. Benefit to targeted income groups, aid in the prevention or elimination of slums and blight, and meeting urgent community needs. The county may apply for the maximum combined award limit of $140,000 in both the general and the economic development planning activities. It is recommended that the county apply for two activities under the general allocation. The first activity in the amount of $35,000 would be used to prepare a Goshen Community Revitalization Study. The second activity for $70,000 would be used to prepare a well remediation feasibility study for Track 92. It is also recommended that the county apply for $35,000 under the economic development allocation to prepare a preliminary industrial development study for the Harmon Field former airport. These proposed activities will meet the CDBG national objective of providing benefit to targeted income group members as restri by restricting participation in low income residents or by excuse me by restricting participation to low income residents of the unincorporated areas of the county. Participants will be charged for will not be charged for these services and no one will be displaced as a result of these activities. Members of the public can submit written comments to the, the County of Tulare Resource Management Agency Community Development and Redevelopment Division at 5961 South Mooney Boulevard. All Tulare County Community Development Block Grant programs are implemented in ways that are consistent with the county's general plan and commitment to fair housing and equal opportunity. Applicants will not be discriminated against on the basis of race, color, ancestry, religion, national origin, gender, marital status, or physical disability. Any assessments resulting from the CDBG funded projects will not be, will not be paid by members of the largest, the lowest income group. Excuse me this morning, my goodness. Technical assistance is available to groups re representing targeted income group persons that request such assistance for developing proposals. Thank you for the opportunity to present. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Questions? Cox? A, a couple. The Goshen Community Revitalization Study, is that a part of the um, update for the community plan? Will this be a piece? Because it was my understanding that plan was at one time a million dollars. I haven't heard a revised number, but it was going to cost a million dollars to do that plan. So is this a piece that will help that plan get a kickstart? It will, it will be doing a portion of the community plan. We're looking at um, another grant we submitted earlier this year, the environmental justice grant, looking at the, another piece of that um, community plan update. And with the, the Harmon Field, I guess with all of these, uh, who is going to perform the work? Are we going to subcontract these out or is this internal work we're going to do? The community plan more than likely will be doing a lot of it internal, but there's on um, all of these we possibly will be subcontracting out different pieces of it to write. So the Harmon Field piece we would contract out? 
Do we think this is enough to pay for that type of a study? We do. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. This is the public hearing. Open the public hearing. Anybody wishing to address this uh, may do so at this time. Seeing no one, close the public hearing, bring it back to the board. Mr. Chair, motion to approve. Second. Moved by Supervisor Cox, second by Supervisor Wordley. Cast your votes. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to item number four. We adjourn as the Tulare County Board of Supervisors and convene as a Tulare County Redevelopment Agency. And again, item number four is a partner with item number three. It's just the local match for the CDBG grant. We would like to request the authorization to um, have that program, the match come out of the program income funds for the county as well as to the redevelopment area. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Mr. I'll second the motion. Motion by Supervisor Wordley, second by Supervisor Vanderpool. Cast your votes. Vote unanimous. Thank you. Okay, now we'll adjourn as a Tulare County Redevelopment Agency and re reconvene as a Tulare County Board of Supervisors. We'll move to item number five. Amend the Tulare County Ordinance 352 to change zone PZ 09004 and general plan amendment GP 09003 Cutler. Hello, my name is April Hill. I'm from Resource Management Agency, Planner 2. And project review division. This item was continued from last um, last week, and uh, also scheduled for closed session today. What is your desire? Uh, your CAO is recommending that perhaps we adjourn to closed session before you open public hearing, since there were legal issues that were raised at your board's last hearing that had never been presented before and our office needed time to review them so we could properly advise you. Okay, this time we will adjourn to closed session. Be back. item number five. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in light of the fact that uh, this um, uh, ordinance or the zoning change uh, request is closely tied to a particular project, uh, I'm going to move that we have this matter referred back to staff uh, who will then take whatever appropriate action is going back for the planning commission or whatever, whatever they, they determine is in the best way of handling this project going forward. But at this time, I would move that we uh, refer this matter back to staff. So we will refer this back to staff and we will close the public hearing at this time. And I haven't had a second in a vote. I have a yet. second on that? I vote. have a second. Okay, moved by Supervisor Wordley, <laughs> second by Supervisor Sheeta. Cast your votes. Vote unanimous. Thank you. Okay, let's move to item number six. Good morning, Brett Fussell, Assistant Director with the Resource Management Agency. Um, this item is the hearing for the eminent domain action to acquire property for the R Road 108 reconstruction project north of Avenue 336 at um, the Campins. Uh, staff is requesting this morning that this item be continued for 90 days or until August 9th, 2011. I did communicate with Mr. Hornberg, the attorney for the Campins, late yesterday afternoon and advised him that this would be the recommendation of staff. I know that he had a conflict this morning and wasn't going to be able to be in attendance until about 1030, but he did acknowledge my phone call and um, email. And um, the August 9th, 2011 date is a date that I did work out with Mr. Hornberg for his availability to make sure we didn't have any conflicts with his future scheduling. With that, I'd respond to any questions that the uh, board may have. Mr. Chairman, the public hearing is still 
open. Okay. And I believe that Mrs. Campen is in the audience. Okay, the public hearing is still open. Anyone wishing to speak to this? Bless you, David. Wishing to speak to this issue? Yes. Uh, my name is Deanne Martin Soros, and I live in Tulare, California. Um, I really don't have any um, connections. I just met Mrs. Campen here in the audience with the parties involved in this. But I did want to say that I really feel that um, property is the foundation of every right that we have, including the right to be free. And I know that um, obviously with public use, you do have the ability for, with eminent domain for safety, health, interest, or convenience. Um, it, in doing my little bit of research, I'm not really sure that this falls into this because it seems like it's um, an eminent domain issue that has to do with another pro uh, private property owner. Um, so I just encourage that um, that you, when this matter comes up, and obviously I'll, I'll make sure and come back, but you consider your fiduciary responsibility to the county at large and obviously to the county employees. We are in very tough fiscal times, and so waging legal battles and doing things like that, to me, are just a waste of taxpayer dollars. So um, really that's all I wanted to say on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just for clarification of the people listening, we are talking about widening a public road. Anyone else wishing to speak to this issue? I'll bring it back to the board. Motion to approve staff recommendation to continue to August 9th. Second. Moved by Supervisor Cox. Second by Supervisor Worthley. Cast your votes. Unanimous will be bringing this back in 90 days. Thank you. Pretty much ends our Board of Supervisors meeting for this morning. Do we have need for closed session? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we do still have need for closed session. Items A through D on your board's closed session agenda. I do not anticipate any announcements. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here this morning. We appreciate it.